Today we are in Paris and we have a lot planned for the day. We are going to be walking all throughout the historical part of the city, mostly through the Latin Quarter, checking out many of the famous chapels and many of the famous museums right here in Paris. is a dream come true destination for me because ever since I was young I have always wanted to visit Paris so it is unreal that we are here right now. Today we're dedicating it all to seeing the historic side starting with the Ile de Cité which is the islands in the Seine where everything kind of all began. We're spending the whole week here in Paris so we're going to be seeing tons of sights trying tons of food but first up we're just going to walk about 15 minutes from our Airbnb over to Saint Chapelle's Chapel where we have our ticket for 9.15. So the St. Chapelle Chapel is right behind us here. We have to be quiet because they just said silencio. But it is the most stunning chapel I have ever seen in my entire life. All the stained glass windows are just truly incredible. There's over a thousand different depictions. When Sophia told me that, I was like, surely there's no way. Surely that's just over a thousand window panes or like little pieces of glass. Nope, surely enough thousand different narratives being kind of like told throughout all the windows. So the way they were all made is you know, very intricate. There's only five different colors made. After you know making each piece, they use like a iron oxide and glass mixture to kind of like paint on top of them to give them all the detail of like the face, the different like clothing wrinkles, and just all the detail that you can see on the window panes. It is incredible how much detail there is. So 70% of the window panes are original and they are from mostly the Old Testament, but there is some also depicted the Passion of the Christ and there's a whole section just for the relics. The reason that this chapel was built was to actually house the thorns that were believed to be the thorns that were on Jesus's head when he was taken down from the cross. So King Louis the IX actually obtained the crown of thorns and then this is what he built for it. So the chapel itself is only 33 feet long. It was a chapel for royals. However, now the crown of thorns is in the Notre Dame, which as everyone knows had the big fire. It's not far away from here. The crown of thorns was safe, however, through the fire. It's not something that we can see today since of course that's closed, but we will be walking by it. Honestly, one of my favorite parts is the ceiling is like a starry night kind of like painting. Nothing like we have ever seen before. So yeah, great stop. Now we're gonna go walk by the Notre Dame. So we just got dripped on. We didn't bring an umbrella, so that was a miss. But the reason that it is called the Latin Quarter is because it was a university area and that is where the students spoke Latin. So yeah, we'll be hanging out on the left bank today, going to a lot of these very historic places and fingers crossed we don't get rained on. So there it is, the Notre Dame, which sadly had the fire in 2019. It's expected that the restoration is gonna take until 2024, but it's still beautiful. Which is crazy, cause that's next year. Oh yeah, oh wait. <laughs> I feel like you said that this not realizing it's 2023 and 2024 year. is next year. You can also get tours that like still take you around the outside and explain it, but we'll save it for another time when it's actually open. So we are almost to the Pantheon. We're in the fifth arrondissement. Right there is a college from 1460. I'm not even kidding, it's that old. This whole area is filled with different cafes, different bookstores, because like I said earlier, this was the university district. Pantheon is in front of us. It has a crypt with some of the most famous, influential people in France, like Victor Hugo's tomb is here. Lots of very important tombs here. So we have a Paris museum pass that we're using. We're not sure if it's going to get us up to the viewpoint or not. 
that. Definitely check out that Paris Museum Pass though, because it's only 55 euros, which sounds expensive. But if you're gonna go to more than like four different museums throughout the two different days that you can buy the pass for, then it makes it well worth it. As long as we get to four of them, like I said, we'll be saving a lot of money. So check into all the different passes around here. going through the chambers, so it's pretty crazy. I feel like it would be more like beautiful music if we weren't in what is essentially a tomb. The crypt is down below, so we will definitely be going down there eventually. But we are to the center part where there's a golden ball. Apparently what it is actually is Folk Holt's Pendulum. That's who actually made this one. This is like the most famous one. And it was really more of like a science experiment to show that the earth is constantly rotating. So built back in 1851, just to kind of like prove that the earth is constantly rotating. So we just learned that the museum pass does not get you up to the panoramic overview. I think you might have to go purchase another ticket. I know it's a little confusing and other people were getting rejected too, but on the main floor, this is where you stand in line, get your ticket validated to go then up to get a beautiful view of the city. But I'm honestly not that sad because it's like gloomy and raining out today. But if it was a beautiful sunny day and your ticket gets you in, I think it's actually only a couple extra dollars, but you have to buy a ticket that includes both. But yeah, we're walking around. There's amazing monuments literally everywhere. There's incredible paintings. So we're gonna walk the perimeter of the Pantheon and then go down to the crypt before we go find some lunch. here in the crypt, but we saw some really famous tombs, including Voltaire, Victor Hugo, Josephine Baker. There's actually a lot of good information around too. We also saw the guy that invented Braille. Like I didn't even know he was French, let alone right here in this crypt. Pretty crazy place, but a really good stop here this morning. So we are leaving the Pantheon, but we have decided for lunch we're going to go to Shakespeare & Co. Shakespeare & Co. is a very iconic bookstore that's been open since 1951. It was named after another bookshop in the same area that had closed. It was Sylvia Beach's Shakespeare & Co. where she had people like Ernst Hemingway hanging out. Lots of history. Now there's a little cafe open next to it too. So we love books. So we're going to go grab a little coffee. It looks like it actually rained really hard while we were inside the Pantheon. That worked out really, really well for us, and now it's stopped raining again. So here we go. We're walking back down towards the Notre Dame. So they did not have a big menu, so we just got a couple little treats to tide us over till lunch. So we got two long black coffees and two cinnamon rolls, which look absolutely amazing. This all cost 16 euros, so a little pricey, but worth it. There is a line for the cafe and an even longer line to get into the bookstore. We did not want to stand in the long line when we were hungry, so we decided to eat first, then we'll go wait in the long line to get our chance to peek inside the bookstore. I think it's no filming inside the bookstore, unfortunately, but we're gonna have a really good time checking it out after we enjoy our little treat. It's also sprinkling outside, which makes like the perfect cozy like bookstore vibe. So a really, really cozy place here. Time to dig into this cinnamon roll. So definitely very expensive, but it is very delicious. There's like all kinds of like granulated sugar around it. There's a lot of cinnamon on it. It's a good cinnamon roll. 
All right, so we are quickly running out of time today. And so we didn't want to like sit down and take a whole hour, hour and a half just to eat lunch. So we stopped by a Euro shop and these are definitely the biggest Euros we've gotten since we left Montenegro a month ago. These things are massive and I'm going to be full for the rest of the day. And the best part is they're only seven Euros each. So it's 14 total Euros for the two of these. And I don't think we're going to be hungry again until late tonight. I know we're in Paris. We will be eating more like Parisian food, but for today we have some amazing looking Euros. Shakespeare and Co was so worth it. It is the cutest little bookstore ever. The second level actually has an area that's dedicated just to reading, but highly recommend it. Even though we didn't have room to buy books, I could not help myself but buy this adorable tote, which was only 16 euros, which I was super, super surprised about. But next we're going to walk, eat our euros, and stop by the Luxembourg Gardens. So we made it to the Luxembourg Garden to just kind of chill out for a little bit in the afternoon and finish eating our euros. And Soph, do you think you're gonna finish your euro? I can only eat half, I'm like so full. We found this beautiful fountain to sit at here to have our lunch. There's people sitting everywhere. There's little chairs you can just help yourself to. Nice and shady since the sun popped out. Just a really relaxing, beautiful place. Of course, we have the Luxembourg Palace right behind me, covered in scaffolding right now. So it looks like it's under some type of renovation. It's used as now the French Senate. So that's how the building is utilized to Day. Next, we're going to head back up towards the Sun, where we're going to go to the Museum de Orsay to see some more art this afternoon before we continue on to the Musée Rodin to see some sculptures. So we're going to be continuing on through Paris this afternoon, going to a few more museums and seeing some art. We decided to go to the Museum of Rodin first. It was included in our museum pass. And what this is, is where all of Rodin's sculptures are. So we've got the Thinker, the Kiss. Those are the two most famous ones. And it's just an absolutely beautiful place because it's in a beautiful French mansion surrounded by a garden. We're also already up to like 45 euros worth of tickets today. And we have all day tomorrow to also like go to museums and everything. So the museum pass that we got was only 55 euros. So we're already nearly like paying that off or already making that worth it so like we said definitely check into those museum and city passes because they actually are pretty worth it here in paris first we're going to go check out the inside and then we're going to make our way around the gardens Unfortunately, the garden right now is covered in the setup for the autumn winter Dior fashion show, but they let you go in probably just so people aren't mad when they pay money to get in here. But if you are visiting in the near future, this will be taking up the garden space. They do um, provide some pictures of what the garden would look like if it wasn't covered up with the Dior fashion show. That is all right. Next, we are going to be heading to Musée d'Orsay. That used to be a train station. It has lots of Monet's, Van Gogh's. So it's gonna be a really beautiful museum with a lot of art from the Impressionist and Post-Impressionist movements. So we have made it. It's open until six. So we have a couple hours to check it out. We're gonna go check in with our museum pass and this is our last stop for the day. But I think after this, we're gonna go grab some dinner somewhere because by that time, I think we're gonna be pretty hungry.
we just saw Van Gogh's Starry Night. He actually painted a lot of Starry Night pictures. This one is obviously not the Starry Night that you think of, but there are lots of Starry Night pictures. This one was kind of traveling around. I know it was in Detroit, so it's nice that it was back here. But I have to say there's some parts of this that are way too crowded to even be enjoyable. It was absolutely crazy. So at 5.30, they started to kick people out of the exhibits and closing things up, but it was really cool to see some Van Goghs and some Monets. Some facts about Van Gogh, in the last 90 days of his life, he actually painted at least one painting a day. Sometimes it was even more than that. Sometimes it was two paintings a day, which is why there's such a large collection. Van Gogh did live in Paris for two years. However, then he moved to the south of France, and when he moved to the south of France, that's when his paintings kind of had some more color to it, um, being by the sea, the warmth, the sunshine. So the lighter, more bright Van Gogh paintings are the ones that were in the south. And then the ones Paris are a little bit darker. And then of course, he did take his own life, which is very sad, but it's incredible to see the collection that he has now. You can hear they're trying to kick people out right now. But we had a good time seeing Van Gogh's Monet's. We got to see Monet's water lilies, which is absolutely beautiful impressionist paintings. We wish we had more time here. We're kind of getting kicked out the door, but that's okay. An absolutely beautiful stop here in Day Orsay. So after seeing crepes being sold just everywhere throughout the city today, we finally stopped for some food tonight and we did grab some crepes. Now, honestly, we're still quite full from the giant euros that we had for lunch because we had such a late lunch. And so we decided just to get like two dessert crepes. I got like a caramel crepe and Sophia got a butter and sugar crepe. They're both so good. So good unreal the place we went is called bray's cafe it's one of the top places to get crepes in the city not only sweet but also savory so make sure to add that to your itinerary they're kind of spread out throughout the city this ends our first day in paris which was so amazing people say that paris is overhyped but i do not agree with that one bit and tomorrow we are going to the louvre which is going to be so crazy and seeing a lot more sites in paris a whole nother side of paris on the right bank so make sure to stay tuned for that we we will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.